good morning children i hope all of you are doing fine following the instructions keeping yourself safe and healthy hope all of us will be back in school soon the time tough time will pass away since you are not coming in the school doesn't mean that you have to be without the touch of the book we are providing lessons within our limited capacities go through them open the books read write get in remain in practice so that it's easier when we come back today i'll be giving you i'll be teaching you the periodic table so all of you before i start get your book get a notebook writing materials write down in small and simple language notes learn that first understand that first and then read the book thoroughly for details and after reading write down you know learning lasts longer if you read as well as write let us begin you have learned periodic table in standard 9 go to slide 2 you have learned periodic table in this uh, in standard 9 we'll just recap quickly what you have learned now the idea of periodic table came into existence with the thought to make the study of elements simpler and easier what is an element an element is a chemical substance which contains only one type of atom like gold silver copper sodium and like water which has two atoms hydrogen and oxygen so there were many elements being discovered one after another and to study each of them individually was becoming a tough task so the need was felt that they should be classified the first approach made in this uh, regard was by german scientist dobereiner now dobereiner what he did similar uh, somewhat similar chemically similar elements he put in groups of 3 like lithium sodium potassium calcium barium strontium this you he put in groups and he observed that the atomic mass of the middle element is the average of the atomic mass of the first and the third elements he named this group as triad so his law is called law of triads but this did not apply to all elements hence it was discarded the next person was newland and he suggested his law of octaves what is what is octave means octave means a group of eight like you see in musical notes sa re ga ma pa tha ni so he found that the eighth element had similar properties like that of the first one when he arranged all these elements in increasing order of atomic masses found that every eighth element's properties were similar to that of the first element from wherever you begin but he did not include the noble elements and there were many other flaws so it was not accepted either next person was mendeleev by that time 63 elements around 63 elements were discovered so he framed that or he rather observed that the properties of elements are periodic functions of atomic masses he arranged all the elements in increasing order of atomic masses and tried to put the similar elements in the same uh, vertical columns but it was found that while doing so there were many similar elements which were um, not put in the same column and the dissimilar elements were put in the same columns then um, isotopes he could not explain so his law was also not accepted now henry mosley 
what he did he thought that since all these attempts have been made to classify based on atomic masses he felt that since atomic number is uh, more fundamental he then tried to classify based on atomic numbers so arranged the elements in increasing order of atomic numbers and then putting all the similar elements in the group uh, same column in the same column and then found that it worked so he proposed that the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers it applied to all the existing elements later on niels bohr made the extended form expanded form of this uh, periodic table which nowadays we are following and is called the long form of modern periodic table so what is a periodic table the systematic or tabular arrangement of elements in horizontal rows which are called periods and vertical columns which are called groups highlighting the regular trends in properties of elements that is what periodic table is now look at the picture have a close look just go through see all the the colors which are put all have some significance so look at it very carefully now let us study certain uh, points about periods and groups what are periods the horizontal rows are called periods now look into the table given in your book and find out there are seven periods the first period has two elements very short period the second and the third periods have eight elements each they are short periods fourth and fifth have 18 elements each they are long periods 6th and 7th have 32 elements each and they are very long period or the longest period so these are seven periods of the periodic table now what are groups groups are vertical columns of the periodic table there are 18 groups check there are 18 groups in the 18 columns and 18 groups in the periodic table the first group group 1 is called alkali metals because all the elements there are metals and they form alkali with water group 2 elements are called alkaline earth metals means they are also all metals and they form alkalies but they don't form as strong alkalies as group 1 elements now go straight to group 13 see group 13 starts with boron that group is called boron family the 14th column group 14 carbon family 15th nitrogen family 16th oxygen family they are also called chalcogens why they are called chalcogens because they form ores see oxygen sulfur most of the ores are oxide sulfides there are others also but these are uh, there are many ores which are oxides and sulfides what is an ore an ore is a mineral which is from which metals are extracted now go to 17th group that is the halogen family halogen means salt former see this fluorine chlorine bromine iodine all are forming salts with the metals hence they are called halogens group 18 18th group or the zero group that consists of inert gases noble gases why they are called inert gases because their outermost shells are incomplete uh, complete the outermost shells are complete the octet they have either eight electrons or the first helium has two means they cannot accept or donate any more electrons that is why they are inert in nature and hence the name inert gases now see 
these elements of group 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, they have their only outermost shells incomplete. Either 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 7 electrons they can have. These are therefore called the typical elements or normal elements or representative elements or the main group elements. They have only one outermost shell incomplete. Now see the elements of group 3 to group 12. These all are metals. They have their two outermost orbits incomplete. That is the last shell is incomplete as well as the second last shell is incomplete. Hence they are called transition elements. Because their last two shells are incomplete. Therefore many of these elements exhibit variable valency. Now you see at the bottom of the periodic table there are two more rows. What are these rows? You see one is called lanthanides and one is called actinides. What are these lanthanides and actinides? So go to sixth period, third group. Okay, these are these could not be accommodated in the main periodic table. That is one of the flaw of the modern periodic table too. But since all are uh, satisfying, so we follow this. Now see in group three, it is mentioned fifty. 7 to 71. All these belong to that third group. Sixth period, third group. Starting from lanthanum to lutetium. Lanthanum to lutetium. 57 atomic number to 71. You see after 57, it is 72. Hafnium. Similarly, actinides, you see, group third of seventh period. Starting from actinium till laurentium, that is 89 to 103. They all belong to this group. So these two, these lanthanides and actinides, they are called rare earth elements. They are also called inner transition elements because they are inside. The others are called outer transition elements. They can be seen in the periodic table. These rare earth elements are found rare. That is why the name given. So these lanthanides and actinides, they are called the inner transition elements or the rare earth elements. Now, how do we decide a period and a group? A period is decided or determined by the number of shells an atom has. And the group is determined by the number of valence electron an atom has. So, when you get an atom, an element is given. Divide the number of fermions. Write the electronic configuration. You can very well see the number of uh, shells there and the number of valence electrons. So, for example, calcium. Atomic number is 20. It has 20 electrons. So, what is the electronic configuration? 2, 8, 8, 2. So, how many shells are there? 4. So, it belongs to fourth period. How many electrons are there in the last orbit? 2. So, it belongs to second group. Take, for example, chlorine, 17. So, what is the electronic configuration? 2, 8, 7. Alright? Now, you may be saying why it is 7, but then why it is called 17. Actually, initially, it was called group 7A. Now, to make our study easier, it's not called as A or B. All the transition elements were subgrouped in, uh, were uh, put in uh, subgroup B and all the normal elements were put in subgroup A. So now that uh, has been removed and all are called uh, this. So this one you can say 7 means 17. 
13 means group 3. I mean, uh, yes, group 3. 14 means group 4. 15 means group 5. 16 means group 6. 17 means group 7. So group 7 and 5th period. I'm sorry, 3rd period, chlorine. Now you go to the assignment, given home assignment, given at the end. And try and solve those questions. As I said, first learn, then write down without looking. I'll be revising. I'll re be saying the answers next day when you can match whether you are right or wrong. I'll be starting the next portion which is most important for standard 10. That is periodicity and periodic properties. Till then, thank you children. God bless you.